Right. <clears throat> what you're looking at is a Scott LR88 in need of some sort of attention. Uh, these things are really easy to service. They're brilliant. Uh, this is the uh, amp stage, the, the driver uh, for the power amplifier. Uh, the power amplifier actually back here. Strangely enough, this part here, which is the uh, output coupling capacitor, because it's a quasi-complementary amplifier, so you need this to keep the uh, DC volts from reaching your loudspeakers. It's a beautiful Mallory cap, a thousand microfarads at 50 volts. Just fell out. Well, in any case, these quasi-complementary amplifiers are so easy to fix. It's ridiculous. Uh, this one's capable of 36 watts per channel, uh, but it has a <laughs> A thousand microfarad coupling capacitors, you really have two thousand. Um, and you know, there's so much room in this chassis. I mean, there's room everywhere, right? There's a multiplex adapter down there, but it doesn't care. You could probably squeeze six 300 microfarad film capacitors. You know, Solon capacitors, big ones. I don't know. They, probably would be a tight squeeze and they wouldn't go all in the same place but you could have a film capacitor as your blocking capacitor so I don't know I'm clutching at straws here looking for things to measure I'm looking for AC volts I've got this running off of my uh, specialized power supply I guess you'd call it and I've decided I'm going to use it on a regular basis for anything I can think of. Uh, so this is what I'm thinking of at the moment. Right, these numbers will drop and jump. That's the nature of the way the power supply works and the way this meter works. But I'm getting some 90, 138... These are the voltages that I'm receiving. So this unit is basically, it's powered. I know I'm touching it and people say you're going to get shocked, but actually, <laughs> I've been shocked so often by these units that I don't care anymore. Yay! I feel the volts! And it feels marvelous. Well, I'm sorry if you don't dig it, but uh, you got to be a special kind of freak to do electronics work, so... There you have it. Okay, I'm just going to switch this, uh, turn it upside down so you can, or right side up, because it's upside down right now. Uh, just a quick, uh, there's the front end. Look at that beautiful front end. Uh, just magnificent. Switching, multiplex adapter, intermediate frequency stage. This is the power supply capacitor, most likely 2000 microfarads. And underneath here, ooh, a bit dusty. Now this is the top side. There's your intermediate frequency stage. It's a standard model. This is the Japanese multiplex adapter. I hate these things. That's the first thing to go. I'm going to replace it with a good one. What's this? Huh. This is part of the blank screen that goes behind. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> It goes behind the, uh, uh, the, the the tuning display. And look at this front end. Boy, it's really gathered a lot of dirt. I'm going to have to clean that up. This thing is... You don't understand. These things go for nothing. I bought this uh, as a parts unit. I paid practically nothing for it. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, you know, why can I tell you, with about an hour's work, this thing is good to go. And with maybe two hours or three hours of careful alignment, this tuner rocks. I mean, get a load of this. Whoops. Oh, what kind of view we got here? Okay. <clears throat> Just move you into position. 
my watch. Some of you may like this, some of you may call this cheap flint flammery of the worst kind. I really don't care. There you go. You got a center channel and a signal strength. And of course, yeah, it's all covered up. I'm trying to get in there and shine some light on the situation. But that's as far as it gets. And stereo indicator light. And so on. This thing will be really pretty when it's all done. Right, now as you can see, the unit has been reassembled, but uh, it has not been repaired. Oh boy. I really need to get my workshop done downstairs. This is what 200 microfarads looks like in film capacity. Now do you honestly think I'll be able to stick 900? Uh, per channel. That's three three hundreds and that's two hundred. I am starting to have my doubts. It would need a second chassis. This just doesn't get it. But it will get two mi 2,000 microfarad electrolytics. Uh, I'll try to get ones as nice as this Mallory. Uh, this was a high performance piece. Now H.H. H. Scott, well, basically they're bread and butter uh, apart from consumer electronics, was laboratory and industrial machinery. So they made a lot of measuring equipment and of course broadcast monitors and multiplex generators and stuff like that. But they used only one quality part and this was really staggering for me when I'd open up one of their most modest little pieces and everything's the same. They didn't cut corners anywhere, and they were packaged engineering. So, have some packaged engineering. For you. This is basically all I did was I wired it up to the AC outlet and you know, plugged it in. And what that did was it allowed me to get into the uh, unit and start measuring voltages. And I was able to measure voltages. Uh, I didn't put the unit under any kind of test. I didn't care. I just wanted to see if voltages were present. Because if voltages are present, <laughs> there's not much work to do. And it's uh, pretty much a fait accompli that this job will only take an hour or so. Now, so now let me just show you the beauty shot at the end. This is what you get. Say you were a prestige customer and you ordered this kit. And by the way, the person who built this kit was highly skilled. I can tell. I can tell when the person that built this kit should have gone nowhere near it. And I can tell when the person that built this kit was so highly skilled that they went out of their way to do extra stuff that ordinarily wouldn't be done but which, yeah, I like to do. And when I see other people doing it, I go, hey, there's an old timer. So, yeah. I'm not an old timer, by the way. When I was starting this in my late 20s, the old timers were the people that had worked uh, at Avro, at Avro, the uh, AV row, the Arrow. And after, uh, Oh yeah. After that went bust, courtesy of Diefenbaker on March 1st, 1960, uh, a lot of Avro employees had, I uh, no. See that? That's doofus tampering. I have to fix that. So, this is what you basically would be getting. We're going to do a nice cabinet. Nice walnut cabinet. I mean, this thing came out in what, 1968. There you go. Back for you. Don't care.
but just look at it. Now, wouldn't you have pride in ownership if you won that? That speaks class. I got to tell you something. If you watch old episodes of Columbo, nine times out of 10, when they used a stereo in the scene, it was an H.H. Scott, not this unit. It was a 344C, but this unit is basically almost identical to the 344C. Uh, they're, uh, uh, this one I think is a bit better as the edge on the 344C because it's got the two uh, metering, metering indicators, which is always helpful. So there you have it. Something that you can make plowshares with if you so choose.